हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द सिक्स लेक्चर ऑफ द डिटेक्शन एंड एस्टिमेशन थियरी कोर्स एंड इन दिस वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ फ्यू मोर एग्जांपल्स बेस्ड ऑन द नेमन पियर्सन थ्योरम ऑल राइट सो लेट्स बिगिन सो आई विल टेक एन एग्जांपल दैट आई गेव यू एज अ होमवर्क इन द लास्ट लेक्चर एंड दिस वॉज हियर द हाइपोथिस जीरो इज डिफाइंड एज uh x i is equal to w i s where your w i s are white gaussian noise and they are distributed with mean 0 and variance sigma 0 square and the hypothesis 1 is x i is again equal to another noise let's say z of i where the z of i is distributed again as a white gaussian noise with mean 0 and variance sigma 1 square and i have uh, n such capital n such samples now i have to find out a detector to figure out if hypothesis 0 is correct or hypothesis 1 is correct so uh, <clears throat> the first step in this in finding out the detector using the neyman pearson theorem why i am using a neyman pearson theorem is because we know the distribution of xi perfectly for each of these hypotheses so i know the probability of x given h0 and i also know probability of x given h1 so i am using the neyman pearson uh, theorem so the probability of x given h0 is see uh, this will be the n dimensional gaussian with mean 0 and variance sigma not square so this is i can write here as 2 pi sigma 0 square under root power n e power minus summation xi square divided by 2 sigma 0 square so this is the uh, the likelihood of x given h0 similarly we can also find out the likelihood of x given h1 which is equal to 1 over 2 pi sigma 1 square power n e power minus summation xi square over 2 sigma 1 square now let me also draw these two pdfs so i am drawing the pdf let me draw it uh, the pdf for capital n is equal to 1 that is we have just one sample if we have just one sample then this is let's say x of 0 and this is the probability of x of 0 here so for the first case where uh, the hypothesis 0 is correct we have a gaussian with mean 0 and variance sigma not is square variance sigma not is square so let me draw this particular graph so let's say it it comes out to be something like this all right so this one the green curve is the probability of x 0 given h0 hypothesis is correct okay and let us also assume that sigma 1 is greater than sigma 0 that means the variance of hypothesis 1 is greater than the variance of hypothesis 0 in that case if i draw the <coughs> pdf of uh, the uh, x0 given hypothesis 1 is correct it is going to be it is going to be uh, a curve with a higher variance all right and it is going to be something like this so this is probability of x0 given h1 all right so i have shown you these two plots the x0 will be so depending on the which hypothesis is correct the x0 will be distributed either with this pdf <coughs> or with the green pdf 
Now, how am I going to detect depending on the value of x? I am again going to use the Neyman-Pearson theorem. So, according to NP theorem, what we do is we find out the likelihood of x, which is equal to the probability of x given h1 divided by probability of x given h0 and we decide h1 hypothesis is correct if this is greater than some value lambda. So let us do that. So the likelihood function here is going to be if I divide these two equations here, I am going to get in the numerator it will be sigma naught over sigma 1 power n e power minus half summation x i square i goes from 0 to capital N minus 1 times 1 over sigma 1 square minus 1 over sigma 0 square this is greater than lambda all right if you just divide these two equations 1 and 2 so this is 2 divided by 1 here this is 2 divided by 1 all right so if you do that you are going to get this and let us not simplify it further i take this to the other side so what we are going to get is uh, e power minus half summation x i square i goes from 0 to capital n minus 1 times 1 over sigma 1 square minus 1 over sigma naught square is greater than sigma 1 over sigma naught power n times lambda now let me take a natural log on both the sides what i am going to get is minus half summation x i square 1 over sigma 1 square minus 1 over sigma naught square is greater than ln of sigma 1 over sigma naught power n times lambda. And let me do simplification further. Let me also divide and multiply here by n. So I am taking this 1 over n here. And this one is what I want to consider as my test hypothesis here. And take the other things to the other side. So this is let's say the test hypothesis Tx which is equal to 1 over n summation xi squared i goes from 0 to capital N minus 1 is greater than minus 2 by n times 1 over sigma 1 square minus 1 over sigma naught square times natural log of sigma 1 over sigma naught power n times lambda and uh, let me also simplify this further uh, this one i can write it to be i can write this as sigma naught square in multiplied by sigma 1 square and in the numerator sigma naught square minus sigma 1 square and you know that we have assumed that sigma 1 is greater than sigma naught. So this quantity here is going to be negative. I can take the negative inside to make it positive. So this turns out to be 2 by n <coughs> sigma 1 square minus sigma naught square divided by sigma 1 square sigma naught square times the natural log of sigma 1 over sigma naught power n times lambda and this particular entity I can call it as lambda dash here this particular entity so my test statistics Tx is equal to 1 over n summation xi square is greater than lambda dash if this is correct I decide hypothesis 1 to be correct if it is less than lambda dash I decide hypothesis 0 to be correct. Now let me find the value of lambda dash also. So how to figure out lambda dash is I have to take the probability of false alarm to be equal to x uh, sorry to be equal to alpha. From here I am going to figure out what is lambda dash. 
So what is the probability of false alarm? See my test is statistics Tx has now changed. It is now 1 over n summation xi square. So what I need to figure out is the probability of Tx given hypothesis 0 is correct. And I also need probability of Tx given hypothesis 1 is correct. Okay. So we know that xi's are Gaussian random variables. So x of the square will uh, and the summation will also change the distribution. So we need to figure out these two distributions. And then what we have need to do is we need to figure out the probability of false alarm. In this case will be equal to lambda dash to inf infinity probability of tx given h0 times dx bar if I put this equal to alpha I will get here lambda dash this lambda dash I put it back here to get my detector all right so I'm not doing this part here this is a bit involved part so I'm not going to discuss that part here but uh, I have assured you that it could be computed once we figure out these two probabilities. Now let me do let me show you what this ends with if I have capital N is equal to 1. So suppose if capital N is equal to 1 then my test statistics will be equal to x0 square this is going to be my test statistics and I'm going to decide h1 if my x square 0 is greater than some lambda dash what it implies is that my if my x0 or the observation is mod of this observation is greater than root of lambda dash then I decide h1 as my hypothesis to show this in the uh, in the um, PDF graph let us go back to the PDF graph and let me show you here so what it essentially means is that I have two regions here so this one is under root lambda dash this is minus under root lambda dash so what essentially it means that if my x naught is beyond these two ranges I decide my hypothesis h1 to be correct and if my x0 lies in between this range then my h0 hypothesis is going to be correct all right so this i have shown you when capital n is equal to 1 and for a general n case we have this hypothesis that we figured out from our neyman pearson theorem all right so this concludes example number one for our case now it is not necessary that every time we get a very proper statistics of this form so once we have solved this likelihood function here once we have solved this likelihood function here it is not always true that we get a very close form expression of something like this to show you this to prove this point let me take another example and here now I am going to take uh, a non Gaussian noise so let me take another example of a non Gaussian noise so I am going to take a sim very simple example the hypothesis H0 is X0 is equal to the noise let's say W0 and hypothesis 1 is again x0 is equal to a plus w0 now w0 here is not a gaussian noise so let me take another noise you can take any one for a simple example let me take a mixture of gaussians so i'm taking here a mixture of gaussian noise So let me define it something like this it is let's say half times 1 over root 2 pi sigma 1 square e power minus 
डब्लू ज़ीरो स्क्वायर ओवर टू सिगमा वन स्क्वायर प्लस वन ओवर टू पाई सिगमा टू स्क्वायर ई पावर माइनस डब्लू ज़ीरो स्क्वायर ओवर टू सिगमा टू स्क्वायर सो दिस इज द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ माई नॉइज इट इज़ अ कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ टू गॉजियंस विथ मीन बी जीरो एंड वेरियंसेज आर सिगमा वन स्क्वायर एंड सिगमा टू स्क्वायर एंड दीज टू आर वेटेड बाय अ फैक्टर हाफ ओके सो दिस अ मिक्सचर ऑफ द गॉजियन नॉइज मॉडल्स नाउ इन दिस केस इफ लेट्स ए एंड आई एम कंसिडरिंग कैपिटल एन टू बी वन जस्ट फॉर सिंप्लिसिटी सो इन दिस केस इफ आई फाइंड आउट द लाइकलीहुड फंक्शन आई वॉन्ट टू फिगर आउट दिस लाइकलीहुड फंक्शन दिस इज इक्वल टू द प्रॉबिबिलिटी ऑफ एक्स जीरो गिवन हाइपोथिस जीरो हाइपोथिस वन इज करेक्ट डिवाइड बाय द प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ एक्स जीरो गिवन हाइपोथिस जीरो इज करेक्ट सो इफ आई राइट दिस द फर्स्ट हाइपोथिस इज गोइंग टू बी हाफ टाइम्स द सेम गॉजन विद अ मीन शिफ्टेड बाय ए सो दिस बिकम्स वन ओवर टू पाई सिगमा वन स्क्वायर ई पावर माइनस डब्लू जीरो माइनस ए होल स्क्वायर ओवर टू सिग्मा वन स्क्वायर प्लस वन ओवर अंडर रूट टू पाई सिग्मा टू स्क्वायर ई पावर माइनस डब्लू जीरो माइनस ए होल स्क्वायर ओवर टू सिग्मा टू स्क्वायर एंड फॉर द सेकेंड केस वी हैव द एग्जैक्टली द सेम पी डी एफ कमिंग इन हीयर वन ओवर टू पाई सिगमा वन स्क्वायर ई पावर माइनस डब्लू जीरो स्क्वायर ओवर टू सिगमा वन स्क्वायर प्लस वन ओवर अंडर रूट टू पाई सिगमा टू स्क्वायर ई पावर माइनस डब्लू जीरो स्क्वायर ओवर टू सिगमा टू स्क्वायर एंड दिस इज द रेशो दैट आई एम गोइंग टू गेट माई लाइवलीहुड फंक्शन एंड यू कैन सी हियर नो मैटर वॉट आई डू आई कैन नॉट रिड्यूज दिस फॉर्म सो दिस फॉर्म इज not reducible and hence we cannot get a very close form or a nice expression as we got in this particular case so it depends on the sufficient statistics that we kind of discussed in uh, we discussed very briefly in the estimation theory if for estimating this value of a if we can get as a sufficient statistic then we can write this likelihood function in a closed form expression and then we can get a very nice closed form test statistic function but it is not always true and uh, here let us make a note that for non gaussian noise we cannot uh, get the sufficient st uh, Uh, the test statistics in a proper form so for a gaussian noise cases the things are very simple and easy but for a non gaussian case the things are pretty much uh, difficult because we do not get close form expressions so i end end the topic on neyman pearson theorem here in this particular lecture from the next lecture we are going to discuss about the bayesian approach to detection in this particular case thank you very much